Good morning. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. 14 of 14th of July. Wow. Well, you know it. It'll be 14th of October and the trees will be turning colors. And leaves falling off of them and whatnot. Oh boy, huh? So, uh, anyway, I was in in the uh, other room there on the Chromebook um, listening to Irish type of music. Celtic style music and um, I thought why don't I get on here this morning and just maybe trip over the strings a little bit and try to play something that sounds Celtic so we'll just go ahead and see what
anyway, just a little fun there this morning. I thought I might come in here and try to just... And I'll look more into this Celtic music. Maybe I can play some Celtic music. If anybody's in favor of that, then you can certainly um, put a comment in that box. And if you are not subscribed to this channel, why, and you enjoy uh, somebody having fun in here, because uh, I really do have a ball. I mean, I'm sitting here in front of our chapel. I mean, it's a combination chapel workroom and music room. And because we're in, a, in an apartment, and so uh, there's really no other place that I can do this program um so yes pardon uh forgive me uh that uh the chapel is in here um it is being used as a chapel during prayer times obviously we try to pray the hours each day i don't always succeed in that but uh sometimes i'm away or something like that and if i think of it during that time then i would say the lord's prayer maybe and uh, the trisagion prayers but um so when it's in use as a music room and in use as a room to put the, to put this uh, Servant of Christ podcast on the air, then um, uh, may the Lord forgive me uh, and give, provide me a better place. And so anyway, uh, we're still talking a little bit about uh, the Orthodox Church being um, set up in Dexter. Now, I, you know, it's, it's quite a story. Actually, I ought to start really sharing um, some of the details about how and when we became orthodox um it's kind of a long story uh i did a, a year uh, many years of study of the religion of islam uh many years it took me to the far east and so forth um then i became a student of the sikh religion um for a long time and that was because i was in the martial arts and the sikh religion claims to be a monotheistic religion so uh I spoke to the guy at the mosque over there. I said, I think I'm going to go sit with the Sikhs for a while. And he, and he goes, and why? And I go, well, because I want to learn the uh, some of the martial art aspects of what's going on. So anyway, uh, in some time, I ended up back in the state of Maine. And um, uh, th the truth is that um, I had given up. I really had abandoned my faith um, a long time ago. I decided that I didn't believe in the virgin birth. Of Jesus Christ um, so I made that statement to my sister I don't believe in that nonsense how can a woman give birth without a man so anyway um, so I kind of abandoned that and um, it was by the grace of God that he brought me back to my faith uh, now uh, Islam played a very important role in that journey um, you see I'm, I'm a man who was brought up in a United Pentecostal Church uh, in, in similar oneness churches and um, so we were very um, smug, I would say. Um, we thought we were better than everybody else, and we was the only ones that had any kind, any kind of truth and that and that sort of thing. So uh, we ended up becoming very smug people. Uh, it's very disgraceful, really, uh, to to have an attitude that way, as if you know that you could do no wrong and so forth. That's very very terrible. Uh, but anyway, um, so I abandoned my faith, uh, kind of. I walked away from the Lord and I uh, lived. And made myself into a god for years and so one day i out of the blue i we, i went to this mall over in tennessee where i was living at the time and i saw this lady there from india and something prompted me to go over and talk to her so i went over and began to talk to her and go you know what is your religion are you hindu or are you buddhist and she goes no i'm a muslim i said oh well i don't really know much about that so uh could you get me a copy of the quran she goes of course so she got me a copy of the quran and i began to read it so uh, once I read the Quran, uh, the Quran uh, proclaims that Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. Uh, so, and uh, and Shiite Muslims to, to this very day believe that Mary remained a virgin her whole life, yet she gave birth to the Son of God. So that uh, just slowly steered me around to my faith. And I wandered around this land for quite a long time, homeless, um, for various reasons. Some were my fault and some weren't. But at any rate, I wandered around this land homeless for a long time. And then finally, the Lord brought me back home. And uh, he gave me my beautiful wife, Esther, who I've been in love with since the moment I laid eyes on her. And she was about four years old. Now, people are like, how in the world could that be? Well, I got to tell you that uh, they, at that Pentecostal church, I had conventions. And her mother and her stepfather were there. And she was sitting in the seat by her mother. And her mother had Maddie, her sister, on her lap. And all you could see was the bottom of her shoes. And 
in this gorgeous um, head of platinum blonde hair. The prettiest thing I ever seen in my life. And uh, it took me a long time before she finally said yes to me. And I guess I wasn't ready. The Lord weren't going to allow me to get in and stomp it, you know, on the golf green. So the Lord let me um, wait until I was, till 2008. So um, the Lord gave me my wife. So uh, from that day forward, I started going to every church in the town of Dexter. There's, there's probably 11 churches in the town of Dexter that I could find to find my way back to the Lord. Um, because uh, once that I read the Quran talking about Jesus being born of the Virgin Mary, uh, I said, well, how in the world would an illiterate man in 600 and something A.D. know that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin unless, the God, did, unless God revealed that to him? Now, I'm not saying I agree with all the theology of Islam. No, I don't agree with their theology, a, a lot of their theology. Some of it I do and some of it I don't. Uh, but I do uh, agree that uh, the Lord had to have shown that to them because the Spirit very plainly says that nobody could come except, except the Spirit draw them. So if any, uh, just like what he told St. Peter um, when he said, who do you say I am? He said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, uh, you know, flesh and blood has not revealed that unto you, but my Father in heaven has revealed that unto you. Now, what purpose did Islam play in my life was that it confirmed to me that the religion that I'd been following since my youth was the truth. So, having discovered that I was in the truth all along, even in before that, even though the theology of the UPC church is not, it's, it's you know, there's some heretical stuff mixed up in with it as well. Uh, but they do acknowledge that Jesus was born of a virgin. So, um, we won't go any further than that and just say that we disagree with their theology. But, um, so I started going to all these churches. And so one day I was, I even attended the Universalist church for a number of months. And one day I was, I had, I was in attendance at the Universalist church and there was a guy over there that I knew. His name was Big Pauly. I call him Big Pauly. His name is Paul. And, uh, he's a, he's a, a, an Italian guy. Um, he goes, Hey, uh, you want to go over to the Catholic church with me? They have a meal there every Sunday. We're going to go over there afterward. And I go, yeah, why not? Why not go over there with you? Because I used to like to, we used to like to talk, you know, like, you know, wise guys, you know. We still do. I mean, we talk on the phone like wise guys. Uh, he'll tease me and say, what size shoes you wear? I go, 14 triple E's. I want to slip out of them very easy because, you know, they, the, old, uh, the old story about, you know, people being thrown in the ocean with cement shoes. It's just a joke, of course. But anyway, I got over there to the meal, and I was so impressed. The Catholics, uh, do a wonderful work up there to St. Anne's. Um, they have a, a feature called Our Lady's Kitchen, and twice a month, it was once a month, once four times a month, but after COVID, uh, and we all emerged from that, then uh, they, it's been reduced to twice a month. But at any rate, they feed the public there um, in the afternoon right after their mass. And so I said, I, I called the lady up. I said, uh, can I volunteer to work here? And she goes, well, why, absolutely. So they put me on two of the teams, and I went up there twice it worked twice a month in the kitchen, the free kitchen, yeah. washing dishes mostly and cleaning up and stuff. So um, the little voice prompted me, uh, if you're going to work here, you might as well attend church here. So I started attending church. And um, later on, uh, after I began to attend, the voice says, ask him about baptism. So I said, OK. So I started talking to him about baptism. All the hoops they wanted me to jump through. Uh, even I was even told by one person, I'm not going to repeat the name of it but one person said you're gonna to have to pay a lawyer to have your background checked i'm like what's that have to do with <laughs> receiving uh because the bible commands me to be baptized but you're you're, you're saying that if you do a baptize a background check we don't and i don't check out that you're going to bar me from being baptized uh, so the hoops that i had to jump through were, were incredible so i ended up uh, leaving there and i ended up going to the episcopal church up in Dover, Foxcroft, and I was riding with my friend, Reverend Kev, who I went to church to school with. Kev did high school and middle school together with him. He was a couple of grades ahead of me. But um, so I started riding with him. He had, at that time, had two churches. Um, one was in Brownville Junction and one was in Dover, which is 14 miles up the road here, Dover, Foxcroft, and then another 14 miles to Milo. So we had did quite a journey. And I went for a couple of years there with him every Sunday, had two masses a, a week. I guess I needed it. But at any rate, um, 
some, I was up in early on the Sunday morning there and uh, here at the house after I'd had my shower and I was getting ready to go to, to church and we're getting ready to, to get a ride because I rode with him. Uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and says, I'm taking you beyond the Episcopal Church. And I went, well, that was odd. So I didn't say anything about that. I just kind of got in the car and uh, before we'd e we could even go one block, I said, Reverend Cav, I believe that the Holy Spirit spoke to me this morning when I was praying. He goes, uh, and he was a very open-minded person. He said, and what did the Holy Spirit say to you? And I said, he's uh, said he's going to move me beyond the Episcopal Church. He gave me kind of a surprised look. Um, and it was about that time, at that period of time, that I started coming out with this wicked problem with my foot. I couldn't walk and I couldn't stand up. And uh, the, We thought it was plantar fasciitis. Well, um, I suffered with that and I sat on my my hiney in here for a few weeks. And I said to Reverend Cab, I'm not going to be attending church for a while. I said, I think that I'm going to just take it easy on a Sunday morning. So um, I quit attending the Episcopal Church with him that summer. And uh, by maybe the first of a couple weeks of August or into September sometime that uh, that same voice came to me. I was in the afternoon. It was in the afternoon here. And I was, uh, my mind was on the Lord at that moment. And that same voice came and said, go on, the computer and find an orthodox church so i said oh wonderful so um i went on to the computer and i found a number for an orthodox church and it was right in the state of maine and it was actually a dexter number and i know of all the churches in the town of dexter none of them uh were orthodox so i was kind of puzzled so anyway i'm going to call this part one i'm going to um part, i'm going to turn the video off and i'm going to turn it back on and do part two of this little story. I can see that I've got about 17 minutes here right now, and I don't want to overwhelm my system. So glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be posting uh, part two here. We'll talk to you in a minute.